The light in this garage is brought to you by the sun. So cool. Hey guys, welcome back to Trial and Error. This is episode two of what may turn into one of the weirdest purchases I've ever made in my life. So, as you see, uh, the countdown timer is ticking away down to 27 minutes before this auction ends. I have isolated it down to this list. These are the trailers that I am interested in most. And uh, over here, you'll see where these trailer numbers were from. These are the ones I checked when I was out there physically. We also have a backup auction on Thursday, um, which is for the solar hybrid only. So there's no lighting towers like these ones have. Um, so I've got the value. Once you part these out, the lighting units sh should bring in an easy 18,000 bucks, 18,004, and the solar hybrid only 17,800. Uh, you'll see my budget here. So I set aside some cash to invest in these. Um, about 34,000. Uh, there is a 15% buyer's premium on this auction, which is pretty painful, uh, but it is what it is. And you can't get around it. So there's, if I spend the full 34,000, uh, it's a, just a hair shy of 5,000 in auction fees. So we back that out and that gives me 29 grand to kind of play with here. And if I spread that 29 grand over four different units, that means I can spend up to 7,250. If I only need to spread it over three units, I can go all the way up to 9,666. And right around 10,000 is about where I want to cut off anyway from that point. I don't, there's not a ton, well, there's still a lot of meat left on the bone, obviously, but um, I feel I feel very safe at, at this number around the 10,000, you know, maybe 10,5 number. Um, and the closer we get to that 18 or 17 range, uh, the less comfortable I am with that in terms of it being a outstanding deal. And that's what I'm looking at here is an outstanding deal. There's gonna be a little bit of work involved um, going and getting three of these trailers and then obviously parting them out. So I wanna make sure I got plenty of meat on the bone there to make it worth my time. Um, and uh, you know, at 10 grand, we'll be okay. So now I'm just biting my nails as we watch this thing wind down and pray that these things don't go crazy. They've jumped uh, in the last 24 hours. On average, they've jumped about four grand. So they are definitely moving up in the next 25 minutes will um, obviously make the biggest difference here. Uh, I would love to come away with four units. Uh, that would be awesome uh, because the, the more units you can buy, generally speaking, the easier it is for me to break even because I am going to be using a lot of these components at the house. Um, but I, I will be very happy if I can get out of here with three units. That will be awesome. Um, I guess I could do less than that or two units. But again, at that point, we're, we're bumping my head up against where uh, the total dollars doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense. So hopefully we end up somewhere in here. Um, that would be amazing, but I will be very happy to end up somewhere in here with three units. And if all hell goes crazy, if all hell breaks loose and these prices just go skyrocketing, I still have the option to come back on Thursday and try to score one or one or four of uh, these units here without the lighting towers. So, wish me luck as I continue to bite what's left of my nails here and hope that we can uh, celebrate in about 24 minutes. A few moments later. All right, we're back. Um, the red extending, so the way this is set up is if you bid uh, within the last minute of an auction, it will auto extend for one more minute. So it, it just helps people, you know, snipers like myself, it, it, it keeps me from being able to snipe it out from under somebody in the last few seconds, which um, well, as a sniper, I don't like, but um, it, it does make it much more fair for the average, uh, you know, bidder. Somebody keeps bidding up. Two minutes, 50. Oh, they're bidding up in the other auctions. That's what's doing it. So when somebody bids in any of the auctions, even if it's not the one that uh, that you're bidding on, it ex it's extending the entire series. 
um, of, of all of the products or all of the lot numbers, I should say. So they don't just have to be uh, bidding up your lot number. They could be bidding up any lot number and it extends the entire series by a minute. All right, so there we are. I'm the high bidder on four of these right now with a total expense of 28401 And now we just uh, fight, <laughs> see who's going to keep trying to knock me out of these four auctions. Uh, we'll see how this goes. But like I said, with this resettable clock thing, uh, this could really, <laughs> this could really go all night uh, if, Somebody, I mean, there's, I think there's 70, 70 different auctions in this package. So all it takes is one of one bidder in any one of those 70 to uh, set a new number. And uh, we all get our clock reset back to three minutes. So uh, not a fan of this actually, but whatever. So uh, I did get beat out a couple of times. So I just rebid three additional bids. Um, right now I'm one dollar over my budget, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I I don't know how much more I'm gonna go. Um, I I can go a little bit more, but uh, uh, not not a whole lot more. At at some point, what I'll do is I will just knock you know let one of these go. Uh, but uh, we're not quite there yet, so we'll see what happens. So we're down to one minute and fifty seconds. That's the lowest it's been yet. And one thing I did make sure I did was I didn't, there wasn't a half a second between the time that bidder outbid me and I was boom right in on them. I, I want to project that I have an unlimited amount of funds here and that I'm not even having to think about it. I just immediately outbid them. So uh, part of that is to hopefully demoralize them and <laughs> to let it go. Uh, can you imagine if after all of this stuff, I had no idea what these were going to sell for. Can you imagine if this closes out the next 45 seconds and I literally end up $1 off from my available planned budget? That would be ridiculous. Oh, somebody just bid something somewhere and oh, somebody just took me out here. Oh uh, yeah, you think so? I'm taking it back. My God, this is stressful. It's fun too. It's a, it's a weird mixture of stressful and fun. Holy flame and popcorn farts, please finish. So the last three minutes of this auction so far have lasted 26 minutes. And it's a, it, it's a real tearjerker. It messes with your head. You think, like right now, I'm at 30 seconds, 28 seconds, I look like I'm home free. And then boom, somebody bids on one of the other auctions, or one of the other lots in this auction, and we go back up to three minutes. Oh my God, it just keeps getting extended. <sighs> but this is as low as we've gotten, knock on wood, so far, uh, 10, nine, eight seven six five four three two one oh no way i just won mm, all dude all four dude four 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 solar hybrid trailers that's four diesel Kubota generators, lowest one has 7.2 hours on it, my highest hour one has 118 hours on it, that's the second, second oil change. All functional inverters, functional chargers, functional everything, good trailers, all new tires, that's $75,000 worth of equipment at resale which, and that's factoring in half the price of retail. 
I'm so pumped. Now I gotta go run and pick up a pintle hitch because I don't have a pintle hitch. Pintle hitches are, you know, those big rings for those of you that don't know. Uh, not like a normal ball for a trailer. Um, 10,000 pound trailer, so uh, yeah, I gotta go grab a hitch. We did it. So cool. I can't wait to start ripping these things apart. I'm gonna use them as is for the winter, uh, just because I've got that grand national project going on and God knows I don't need any more projects, but I, I had to get in on this. Uh, I didn't think I would win four trailers, uh, but uh, I'm glad I do, that's a good project for me. Uh, but that's one of those things that's really fun for me. I'll get something out of the house from it to get the house on solar. Because our electric bill, especially in the summer, 330, 350 bucks a month, um, which is insane. So we're gonna put the house on solar, and I believe I've got enough equipment there uh, that I will pretty much break even. Why did it just go back? The auction just got extended again. Oh, for frog snacks. <laughs> I'm, I'm here, I'm freaking celebrating. I hadn't even walked it into the end zone yet. It said it was done. Good thing I'm recording the screen. And there is the screen I've been looking for. One, two, wait a minute. Oh, no, it hasn't. I was going to say, I should, bingo, there it is. I won, I won, I won, I won. I actually got it wrong. I was reading the wrong line. Um, the highest hours of these is 88.2. We got 88 hours on that one, 64 on this one, 17 and 7.2 hours. These generators retail for over $8,000 a piece. $8,000 is more than I paid for the entire trailer. Packing up my little generator and my tiny little compressor just in case we have some tire issues. Uh, I want to take care of that before I figure it out on the highway that we got a problem. So it is the next morning here and I am on my way to the bank. Got to get a cashier's check made out uh, for that total amount. And then I'm going to do at least pick up one of the trailers today. Um, I don't know, I got four trips to make, about a 45 minute trip each way. So it's a lot of driving. Um, so I don't know that I'll get them all today. I may have to spread this out over the weekend, but uh, at any rate, uh, that's kind of what we're up to. Do it for Dale, Rock. Do it for Dale. You can hear that turbo. <laughs> In a pickup truck. Can't tell I am smitten as a kitten with this truck. I freaking love it. I love everything about it. Love the interior. Love the power. Incredible torque. Rides so nice. Massaging seats. Air conditioned seats. Just ridiculous. Heated back seats. Ugh. I don't even deserve a truck this nice, but I got one. You know, when I towed my boat with it, which is about 5,000 and change, depends on how much fuel I have in it, but uh, you really don't even notice the boats back there. Not the case with these trailers. <laughs> so, supposedly 70, 70 or so trailers here. It looks like there's more to me. I don't know. It just feels like they go on and on for days. You know, imagine that 45 grand in every single one of these to get them built. And now they're selling for like seven grand. Crazy. I think the last three are right down here. I'm gonna check my paperwork though. This is so key. I wonder how many marriages this thing's gonna save. Reverse cameras for the trailer hitch. 
No. These things are no joke. It is heavy. Don't mind all the clunking noises you're gonna hear. That's just the pintle hitch, nature of the beast. They're freaking loud, but they handle a lot of weight, so. If you can't tell, I got it pulling pull behind me here. Maybe you can't see. Now you can see. I'm gonna go through the first checkout process here and see what this is all about. And then we gotta come back and do it three more times. You got it. Actually, let's give the trailer once over twice. Do you have um, paperwork? Sure do. <laughs> Makes sense. Thank you, sir. All right, have a good we'll day. see you in a couple of hours. Yeah. All right, and we're off like a prom dress. So, just realized I completely forgot to bring my light, my uh, plate for my trailers. So we're gonna run the gauntlet here. It's all on the highway, unfortunately, so the odds of me getting picked up by a Stady are pretty good. But we're gonna see just how lucky we can get today. So stupid. Love these Ford engine braking. So nice. Let's try that trailer brake. Oh, trailer brakes work good. Climbing uphill, making between six and nine pounds of boost. 60 miles an hour turning 2,000 RPM. Twin turbos, man. Freaking awesome. So the fact that this is my backyard right now is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> I've got four of these monsters sitting in the backyard and now I'm uh, just kind of getting to know them a little bit. So we'll start off, I can't believe I got this in my backyard. Um, we're gonna start off and uh, just walk you through each of the components on the deck of the trailer and then we'll take a look at the electronics up front. But we lead off, each trailer comes with a Kubota Lowboy GL1100. So that's an 1100 watt constant. I don't know what the surge rating is on it, but I'm sure it's decent. Um, 1100 watt diesel generator which has a 35 gallon fuel tank on the generator itself but is but it also they've installed a 113 gallon fuel tank in the back in the middle of this thing they've centered two giant battery banks these are agm batteries so big time money um from what i researched these are eight thousand dollars per cell so 16 grand for these two they weigh 1800 pounds more than 1800 pounds 18 something or 1912 pounds per battery box so they've centered them right over the axles for obvious reasons that's where you want your weight um, but yeah eight grand in batteries i forgot to mention the generator up front also eight thousand dollars i think 8400 is the msrp on that generator Behind the batteries, as I said earlier, we've got a 113, it's 100 and some odd number. Oh yeah, no, there it is, 113 gallons uh, fuel tank. Uh, bonus, I did not expect one of these out of the three trailers, one of them is topped off. So <laughs> that's another, I don't know, what's diesel running at 250 or so. Um, yeah, so even if I make the math easy at 100 gallons, it's another 250 bucks. Um, that ain't bad. So above that, I'm gonna get you a wider shot here as we go through the rest of the deck itself when we look at the panels. So for the panels, we have 10 total, five on each side. Uh, these are rated at 260 watts and they are on really nice pivoting mounts here. We've got a little cam lock. You can lock them at any degree, including straight up and down. Uh, to get the, obviously to get the best angle for the sun. And they lock right into place on both sides. And then when they're flipped back, you know, you've seen them when they were flipped up, they're nice and compact. On the back of the unit, we have, I believe this is a 36 foot tall mast that you can crank up and aim four 120 watt LED drivers, uh, enough to light up a football field, just one of these guys. And I, I lit it up out here last night. Maybe I'll remember tonight and do it and I'll record it. 
these are ridiculous. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I think I'm going to take four of them and put them for the lights themselves and actually put them in the garage. Um, for when I'm doing something where I need really crazy amounts of light, it's nice to have that option. So I'll make these like an auxiliary um, high bay type of light sit, set up and use them in the garage. And then I'll sell the rest of them to help offset the cost as well as the aluminum pole. Um, so these lights, I honestly don't know what they cost. I would say if I had to guess, they're probably a couple hundred bucks a piece. So you got four of them on this pole and four of them on a front pole on every trailer. So a total of eight. Uh, these I did look up and they're $3,000. It's all aluminum. It's a nice piece. I think I'm gonna have trouble selling them to be honest, cause I don't know, I don't know who would want these and for what, I mean, I, I don't know, but uh, it's a lot of aluminum if nothing else. You've seen the beauty now, let's look at the brains. So light tower here, I know it's out of, out of frame, but uh, second light tower with the same setup on it. And um, let's see, how do we want to start with this? I guess we'll, we'll start with these inverters. So the retail on these inverters is 5,750 bucks each. You get two of them. 6,000 watt continuous and some ridiculous peak number. Um, but we have two of them, so you're looking at 12,000 watts per trailer. Uh, and from what I can see and what I get here, um, I'm gonna kill this door because the wind's blowing it. Will you stay if I go all the way? No, okay. What ends, what ends up happening here is the two battery banks come in through these massive cables. And from there, all of our solar panel wiring comes in through the, this set of breakers. And this is called something fancy, photovol, photovoltaic combiner? I, I don't know. Well, anyway, they all come in through here. And then we have a midnight, which you probably can't see. Actually, this will save the door issue too. Hold on. All right, so there we go. Are we recording still? Yeah. So this is a charge controller. Now, what I don't understand is, I watched a video on these last night. Uh, the inverters themselves, whoa, it's a big hand. The inverters themselves work as charge controllers as well, but for some reason they opted with a different one here. I don't know why. Uh, I'm sure I'll eventually I'll figure out why, but at the moment, this is the charge controller. So this just basically directs voltage back to the batteries to charge them up and then these big yellow guys do the inverter uh, it's a uh, 48 volt system so these although right now it's like 56.5 volts it, it'll vary within there but these guys take that 56 and bump it up to uh, two different legs in order to have 220 uh, or 240 on each trailer I hope the winds not bothering you probably is Next to that, we have a pretty simple sub panel here for uh, the main feeds that feed each one of these, I believe. Uh, no, sorry, these would be on the output side. So there's two double breakers here. I'm guessing for 50 amp outlets, which they have on the sides of the trailer here to feed whatever you wanna feed. Uh, there's a couple of 110 outlets right here as well. And I found this, here's the GPS tracker for this unit. Uh, these must be what he buried out in the sand. They have a battery pack built in, but they also can be powered off these units themselves. So I'm sure they had this tucked in somewhere, um, but it has been removed. And now I'm really tempted to try to do something cool with it. I don't know. Uh, let's see, over on the side here, which yeah, you can kind of see, there is a rheostat, which looks like it's just running these cooling fans that are up top. So you can set, they've got it set at 90 degrees those fans will kick on and it draws fresh air in from the bottom and pumps the heat out the top. So actually a really well-designed little cabinet. Uh, and obviously it's all weatherproof and everything. Um, but there's uh, there's a few bucks in here. So we talked about these guys. So 55,750 bucks, you know, $100 for a sub panel. These are actually a lot cheaper than I thought they'd be. These are only about 500 bucks. Um, a couple of light timers to control the lights uh, on the towers and uh, I think that's about it for there. Yeah. Trailer itself, really nice shape uh, car hauler. And uh, I am going to be keeping at least one of these trailers. 
uh, electric brakes on it. They all work great. Believe me, I <laughs> you know if they didn't because this thing was so friggin' heavy. Um, but they worked really nice. I uh, got to try out the trailer brake controller, the factory one that's in my truck. So that was cool. I was glad everything worked because there was uh, no stopping this thing without some assistance from the trailer brakes. So here's my thought. I think what I want to do, I, I've got that project in the garage of the car that I'm building, the Grand National. Winter's coming. I don't know that I'm even going to tear into these things, but I do want to take advantage of my investment right away. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook one of these trailers crudely up to my garage to power my garage. And I'm going to take this trailer and connect it up to my generator hookup that I already have to power the house and see how it does over the winter. I don't think one of these is going to be enough to power my house, but I don't know. Um, we'll find out. Uh, but I would, like I said, I don't want to pay an electric bill anymore and I shouldn't have to because I got a backyard full of solar stuff and diesel generators. So I'm going to just try to get an idea of usage, what the house draws on, on average. And I, I know in the summer, without question, these would not be enough to run the house because you got the pool pump going and the air conditioning going. Um, just doing the wattage based on what's on here. We're going we're gonna to draw too much. But that's, that's why I got four trailers. So we got more than enough, we will ever, more than enough power to run this house um, just by parting out some of the other trailers and getting all these panels up on the roof. But uh, that is all probably going to be a spring project. Like I said, I, I got my hands full as it is. I just couldn't let this deal go by without grabbing them. So I'm just going to run some hookups over to the garage in the house and stop getting an electric bill for the winter. So that'll be cool. Let's do that. So I popped a meter on to these guys and they are energized off the inverter. And one thing, if you're, anytime you're working on solar, you, you can, you got to assume everything is live all the time because you just, you never know. As long as the sun's turned on, anything could be live at any time. But you've got, I've got so many sources of potential electricity here. Um, we've got a generator, we've got two battery banks, you've got solar panels that even when you think everything's off, test it. You can't trust anything. Ah. Alright. So I think what I'm going to do is we're going to remove the outlet portion of it here. I'm going to tie in with, this is some outdoor uh, 10 gauge 10-2. So we're going to tie in some 10-2 ten, some ten and um, feed it right into the window there, right into one of my 220 outlets in the garage. And uh, that should get our garage going. So ground we aren't going to actually use. I'll wrap that guy back in there for now. And I forgot my nuts. Wire nuts. You know what the, uh, the best part of this whole thing is? is ever since I built the garage I've wanted to keep it heated all year round but I just felt wasteful you know burning energy to keep it heated well not anymore we got free energy okay audio all right we're back in the garage now so I am going to kick off the main and then we're gonna go plug her in you're barely gonna be able to see this but so I just put one of my uh, 220 ends on. I'm gonna just plug this guy right into the wall outlet. Now would be a good time for me to mention what is always in the fine print of all my videos. Do not use this as a guide on how to. This is for entertainment purposes only. Now I'm gonna turn back on the breaker for those outlets. So now, when we fire up those inverters, the garage should be on, should fire back to life. Ready for success or hilarity? Either way is fine. So you flip the main power onto them, they go through a boot sequence, and it will say ready on this one, which is the main, and this one will say waiting for the main because it's a slave. And apparently you can link a ton of these together, which is really important for me because I'm going to want to link a ton of these together since I have them. And um, this just, I want plenty of headroom in the system 
so that no matter what we want to do, I don't want to ever have to think about electricity in the house. I just want it to be there. Um, stand by to hold. Ready, waiting for master. So now we'll hit this. And I can see the lights on in the garage. That's freaking awesome. Didn't even dim the lights. So here we are, um, three days later, and I have been running on solar power for the last three days. So here's what we've learned. Um, one trailer, as you saw, wired into the house, or wired into the garage. One trailer wired into the house, neither of them getting remotely near full sun um, based on where they're sitting in the lawn here. So this is not the ideal solution, but I did want to get a feel for you know what to expect i never had solar before i really had no frame of reference for how much power we would actually use so what i can tell you now after using them for three days we without a doubt when all of these panels are running we're gonna have plenty of juice um, to run everything in the house reliably i also uh, did a full test on the battery packs and by full test i mean i had them fully charged i then flipped the solar panels the opposite way to the sun and I just let the house run and we did everything as we would normally do just on one trailer's worth of battery packs. And we got a uh, full 30 hours of doing everything a normal household would do on just one set of the battery banks. So I think we're gonna probably utilize um, two or maybe three sets because what I'd like to do is get a full week on battery alone, just battery. Um, so that way if we have zero sun for a week, no big deal. It won't even need to run the generators. Um, but we always will have a generator backup. Uh, also tested the generator backups and they kick on automatically. I was able to get into the menus and make adjustments. So they kick on at 50%. Once the batteries hit 50, they'll, they'll kick on and they'll shut back off when the battery pack uh, reaches 95%. Um, like clockwork, works beautifully. So we'll keep one generator three battery banks, and then all 40 uh, 250 watt solar panels, and we're gonna be cooking. But that, like I said, that's gonna be a, a spring project for me. Um, we, we got a Grand National to build, so uh, I want that thing ready to play with in the spring, but this will certainly be the project. That said, this is the longest video I have ever posted to YouTube, and if you're still watching, thank you very much. Uh, in fact, let's screw with the people that didn't make it this far. Write something like, um, I don't know, that's the biggest chicken I've ever seen. And uh, you'll drive them nuts. As always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, or criticisms, throw them down in the comment section below me. Otherwise, everybody, have a great day.